You know, in, in the race world, there are curves, there are turns, there are corners, but uh, the corkscrew is more akin to, a, uh, to an elevator with a throttle and a twist. It's really exciting to take that corner just flat out. You just cannot have enough horsepower in that corner. It's, it's uh, so exciting. It's like a six foot drop. I mean, a six story drop. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's life changing. When you learn to dance, there are different kinds of dances. Uh, there's the cha-cha and there's slow dancing and there's hip hop and there's break dancing. Um, Laguna Seca is the Lobata. It's the dirty dance. I think it's probably one of the more technical tracks out there just because of the blind corners, um, the way the track's set up. You'll, you never master a track. You're at its mercy. So the first track I ever went to I was Laguna Seca. Now, I wasn't competing, but I was a spectator. And uh, when I wanted to get into motorsports through the SCCA, the way the scheduling worked out, it turned out that that particular weekend that, that, the, that I wanted to go watch a race, that was the, the weekend of a Laguna event. So that was the first track I ever went to, the first time I ever watched a, an event there, and it was in uh, 1988. My first time actually driving on the racetrack was, uh, I don't know, I've had it hard to describe. I had driven it in video games before, a little bit off and on, and then I simulated arcade stuff back then. So actually being on it and driving it was, I don't know if I can put it into words. My mother bought me a book when I was a little boy, well, when I was a teenager, and it was made by Amway, and it was about racing. It was about some of the major tracks around the world. And the one that always stuck out the most in my mind was Laguna Seca. The first time that I went to Laguna Seca, I was going to school at Stanford. I was working at a service station to help pay for school. And I was wrenching on cars and stuff. And a guy came in and we got to talking. He said, hey, would you like to go to Laguna Seca this weekend? I didn't even know where it was, you know? <laughs> I just knew of it. I didn't realize I was so close to it. And I was so in Palo Alto. I said, yeah, I, I'd love to go. I, how far is it? He says, oh, it's only a couple hours away. And he said, I'm an SCCA track marshal and I work there for the weekend. If you go with me, I'll give you a pass and you can go anywhere you want. I said, great. So we went down there and he says, look, I'll be gone all day working. I'll just meet you here at the end of the day. We'll meet here at the car and we'll go home. During the day, I was walking around the paddock just drooling on everything. Formula cars to Volkswagen, uh, Formula Vs, every, every class imaginable. And this guy said, um, hey, are you busy? Uh, we've seen you walk by a couple times. We could use some help. And I said, uh, well, what's it going to cost me? You know, and they, they laughed and they said, you know, no, if you want to help us out, we'll feed you and everything for the weekend. So I helped them all day and helped them and they had me take cars, tires down to get changed and back and forth, a little wagon. And, Near the end of the day, the guy says, hey, your team's doing really good, the two cars. And I said, yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool guys. They're really nice to me. He said, well, you know who this is. You're helping, right? And I go, well, yeah. And he goes, no, come on. You can tell, you know. He says, that's Dick Smothers of the Smothers Brothers, comedians. Well, Dick Smothers was a famous F1 racer besides this. And that was what really hooked me on racing. I just always kind of drove out of control on the street and uh, I, got, I got to go for a ride with somebody that had gone through a, a training program at one of the driving schools and it opened my eyes at uh, what I was doing what wasn't exactly the safest and I was doing it all wrong where I thought I was doing it right. So uh, that's what really the way it, it all started uh, with me being interested in motorsports. My first time here uh, was when I was about 10 and uh, my dad took me to come watch the knee car race here and uh and it's, it was pretty cool it got to meet my michael and jetty and all those guys and that was pretty cool um so my first time here was just watching the race and and then i actually came this building was here still and they came and saw the skip barber car and all that and i you know of course told my dad oh, i want to do that one day and he's like oh yeah maybe one day you know and then you know 10 years later here driving it it's kind of a romantic thing for me you know i grew up a country boy in oregon and um 
my father and I used to watch TV and while other boys were talking about Willie Mays and Willie McCovey and collecting baseball cards, I was more interested in the racing role. I, when I was in North Carolina, I lived in North Carolina for a while, I would tell people like, oh yeah, I work at Laguna Seca. And they were like, what, you work at Laguna Seca? Like, how is that? That's awesome. And it was like totally foreign to them. Like, they met someone that actually works at Laguna Seca. It was pretty funny actually though, I was at a car dealership and uh, helping out one of my buddies and uh, I, he had tattooed on his arm at Laguna Seca racetrack. He was just there and I was like, and I was like, hey, is that Laguna Seca on your arm? He's like, yeah, how'd you know? And I'm like, oh, I worked there. He's like, what? He'd never been to the track, but he had it tattooed on his arm. I was at Laguna Seca one year in uh, about 71 and it was in the stands. Uh, well, I was all over the track that day, but I was sitting in the stands watching it turn one and I had been watching numerous races and to the left, the hills are open. And I hadn't realized, I looked up and I go, Jesus, the hill's turning green. Well, Fort Ord was a big Ford over on the coast. And they had walked and hiked and bivouacked over to the track and were allowed. And there was thousands of military guys all in their green army uniforms and they allowed them to come watch the race. It was spectacular. There's always something big happening at Laguna Seca. I like that it's not your typical racetrack. A lot of racetracks will have like a long straightaway where a period of time will just be straight for a while. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of rest on this racetrack. If you think about it, like you're always pretty much turning. Um, I know for the MotoGP guys, this is probably one, they say this is like one of the most challenging tracks for them. Um, just because it's, you're not, you don't have time to rest. There's no time where you're just going straight for a bit. You're always, you're always in a turn. Um, you're always doing something. So it's, it's really challenging that way. I, I race that track in my head when I'm on, when I'm on the scales and I'm, I'm setting the car up. I want to favor something. At every track, I want to be able to favor a particular area in the racetrack. And unfortunately, Laguna Seca is, I mean, it's so even. There's mainly left-handers, but the right-handers are high speed. There is very little give and take at that track. Laguna, I mean, I've tried it in my head a hundred times and I just can't do it. I can't bring myself to give up anything uh, to gain because I don't think uh, there's not enough trade off there. Laguna Seca sets the bar. A lot of the tracks, uh, they may be higher speeds. Uh, there's every track has its little nuance that makes it special. But Laguna Seca has lots of things that makes it special. The weather's crazy. It was crazy. We were there uh, just uh, last month and we unloaded and it was a little bit cold and foggy, which we, we've been parked for three hours with a fog in. So actually the, the engines do like it here. The best way to describe that is if, if you've ever been around the gals much, you know they've constantly got to change their clothes. And then all of a sudden at noon, the fog was not thick, but it was drizzling, but the sun was still out, the track got wet. And then within 20 minutes, the track was dry and that drizzle fog kind of moved on. And it seems like we're like in a pocket because we don't get a ton of rain actually on the racetrack. When it's actually raining, it kind of like swirls around us and it doesn't actually really like rain like all the time here. Yeah, it's weird. So not only have you got tires and weather and and then as the day warms up and the, the cloud goes off and the sun comes up, then you bring out the shaved slicks um, and oh yeah, you're constantly changing. So you kind of have to be prepared for everything there, but it's kind of neat. It's, it's to have that uh, sort of variance that you don't see at other tracks. It's, it's interesting. The corkscrew is what it's all about. Uh, the first few times you go through it, uh, for me, it's, it's no big deal now, uh, but you definitely um, it's sort of like a roller coaster. And you got every single corner um, that you can think of here. You know, you got your increasing radius, decreasing radius. Uh, you've got your compromised corner, which is the corkscrew. Corkscrew is a little bit of a compromised corner, we call it. Laguna Seca has some of the most unique corners of any racetrack anywhere. Your car has to love that corner. You have to love the corner. Laguna Seca, when you go to corkscrew, when you learn how to take any left-hand corner, you learn basics of how to go in wide and do this and do that. But when you come out the other side of the corkscrew, all of this stuff that you learn goes out the window. Because you really have to brake hard um, going into the first corner and actually to get gain speed going down out of the corkscrew. So what looks like the right line coming into the corner isn't the right line. Because you're 
your G loads change so dramatically from one direction to the next direction, and typically the, the last direction you ever feel is a car getting light. You really have to, it's really blind going up to it, and when you brake, you're kind of going over a rise, so the front end will get a little bit light, and sometimes you will get a little bit of lockup with the mm -hmm. front, so you kind of have to actually come out of the brakes for a second maybe, and then get back into them. Um, that particular corner offers uh, three quick changes from heavy braking to a pretty hard left to all of a sudden you're light, and then the, the, the part that's, I think maybe most exhilarating part of that corner is the compression at the bottom of the corkscrew that you feel uh, as you're turning to the right. Yeah, when you turn into it, you're like, it basically it drops off like the face of the earth. So you got everything, you get, you get heavy braking being pushed forward to a lateral G to being picked up in your seat, to being compressed in your seat, then pushed back to the left. So you basically get every single direction, everything sensory overload. Uh, from that and I like it. I had a car, I was racing one of my 510s there when I was pretty much a rookie and I had dropped the right sides off in turn six and I, I never lifted, I should have lifted and I brought the car back on the track too abruptly and it, and it hooked left and we went nose into the wall and left side, driver's side, the retaining wall at the bottom of turn six and I was sore. <laughs> I learned how not to, what kind of seat I would never mount in my car again, and I, I learned also a, a way I would never build a roll cage. I mean, I learned from that experience. I was in a race, and uh, there was multiple classes of races running that day on the track at the same time. And I only had a few laps go to finish a race and um, to win a, a, a major race that day. As I come around uh, turn five, a car, um, a, um, an RSR sports racer spun in front of me and I went wide to try to avoid him but the last second he looped around in front of me again and he was facing me and my car went right over his nose. I hit the front of his car, bounced off his front tires and went completely over his head. Crashed into the sand on the other side, come down hard, bent my tire rods, my wheels were crooked, um, it was a mess, and when I came into the pits, I was sitting there and I was asking about the guy, and pretty soon here came the driver. I was grateful that he was okay, and you got to remember that right behind their head is this single driver roll cage, and he had a wheel. It was a magnesium mag, a real magnesium mag. And he said, you know, we have a tradition in racing that when we lose a corner, meaning a wheel, we give it to the guy that damaged it. And he says, I want you to have this wheel. And he was being really nice about it. And I said, uh, God, I'm so sorry. He said, no, it's okay. He says, but by the way, if you ever want to know uh, anything about the bottom of your car, I can describe every single bolt to you. Uh, but Laguna Seca brings out the best in a driver. It makes you learn to respect your car, whether you're at a car show there, or you're racing on the track, or you're a spectator, you're in awe of everything. Yeah, the corkscrew is the signature part of that racetrack that you really can't uh, reproduce. There's no other track like it in the world that I know of, and uh, it's for certainly the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Laguna Seca. But you know, Laguna Seca, over, over the years also, it's been to have come there as a boy and to dream about racing there, and then to get to go to the track a lot of times and see so many wonderful, accomplished race car drivers, and then to go there and to win races and set records. And now to see my son do this, that's in, it's so awesome for me, you know, to see him do well. And he's heard all these stories and now he goes out and beats his dad's records and does all these things. And we've raced endurance races together there. And it's been, uh, it's been really amazing. <laughs>